Mr. President, it's so great to see you. It's about um, time we've met. I cannot believe it. I know I feel like every time you've come to the studio, I haven't been here. It's my pleasure. We have a lot to talk about. I want to talk about the book and these wonderful people. But I think we should begin with what is in the news today. Sure. There yeah. are American cities boarding up. There are schools that are closing. Everyone's awaiting the Derek Chauvin yeah. verdict. And I was reading back to what you said after George Floyd died, and it struck me. You said, Laura and I are anguished over the brutal suffocation suffocation of George Floyd, disturbed by injustice and fear that will suffocate our country. And then I was just thinking about this moment, yeah. this verdict. I mean, what do you think will be the impact on the racial reckoning in this country? I think the first thing is, Hoda, is that people know that the trial has been conducted fairly and that rule of law uh, is uh, reigns supreme in our mm -hmm. judiciary. Uh, We'll see what a jury of his peers says. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think a lot of people have already made up their mind what the verdict ought to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, all I can tell you is, is that if the trial is not conducted fairly, there is an appeal process. One of the things that we learned after the storming of the Capitol was our institutions held. Mm -hmm. And one of the institutions that's really important for the confidence of the American people is a fair uh, judicial system. And I think that's what's playing out on our TVs yeah. right now. I, I do want to talk about the Capitol. We'll talk about that in just yeah. a second. But let's talk immigration for a second. I'm looking at these beautiful portraits of these of these immigrants. And then I'm thinking about other images that are so disturbing to yeah. me that remember the little 10 year old boy do who I was ever? wandering, crying through the. Yeah. yeah, you can picture him or the the two and three year olds who were dropped right over the fence. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about those images and I just keep thinking, like, why can't we get this right? Well, you know, uh, it's hard for Americans to understand and I can't really understand why a mother becomes so desperate or how a mother becomes so desperate that she's willing to put her children in the hands of a coyote, a mm -hmm. smuggler. And uh, so there's been a lot of devastation in Central America, political upheaval, earthquakes, uh, gangs and drug lords. And the people are totally intimidated. And, uh, and so they're streaming to our border. The system really needs to be reformed and yeah. fixed. Two things I think will help alleviate that. One is an asylum process that is more robust. In other words, the border is being overwhelmed right now, and there needs to be more judges and more courts so people can have a fair hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, we need to change the work visas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot of jobs that, that uh, uh, are empty, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of jobs that need to be filled, and yet there are wi people willing to work hard. To do so. And so I think a combination of those two right. would help alleviate some of the border. The, the, he, I talked to a border patrol head down there mm -hmm. in, in the southern sector. And one of the problems we have right now is that many of the law enforcement, the border patrol agents, are pulled off duty to deal with children yeah. and, uh, you know, to guard hospitals. Right. And, uh, and it just goes to show there's a real shortage of manpower and focus down there. Well, you're so passionate about this. I mean, you're, I am of, passionate. You're, you're lobbying, obviously, by this book. You're lobbying for it. But I thought you said something interesting in an interview a couple of days ago, and I'm paraphrasing, but you said, as you as you talk about immigration reform, you're not so sure that your Republican colleagues are listening. Why not? Well, some of them aren't because uh, the politics and some of the Democrat colleagues weren't listening when, when I was a, a mm -hmm. president because you can score political points with the issue. Mm hmm. And so part of the purpose of the book is to elevate the discourse and remind our fellow citizens about the, you know, the beauty of America that attracts people mm -hmm. who are escaping tyranny or fleeing oppression or just mm -hmm. want an opportunity to provide a better life. And, uh, uh, and today we're swearing in a group of citizens yeah. who uh, were on the front line of the pandemic, mm -hmm. many of them, and they weren't even citizens of the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah, I, 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 it's a beautiful country we have, and yet it's not beautiful. <laughs> When we condemn, call people names and scare people about immigration, yeah, it's an easy issue uh, to to frighten some of the electorate. And I'm trying to be, I'm trying to have a different kind of voice. Well, okay, if you were to describe the Republican Party as you see it today, yeah. how would you describe it? Uh, I would describe it as isolationist, protectionist, and to a certain extent, nativist. Hmm. And you, are you disappointed? Well, it's not exactly my vision, yeah. but you know what? I'm just an old guy they put out to pasture, so 
<laughs> just a simple painter. <laughs> the simple painter. <laughs> okay, let me give you a hypothetical candidate for 2024. Okay, okay this hypothetical Republican is pro-immigration, pro a path to citizenship for undocumented workers, yeah. pro DACA, pro reasonable gun control, yeah. pro education funding for public schools. Does that person have a shot? Or that Republican, would that Republican have a shot in 2024? Sure, yeah. You think? I think so. I think that uh, it depends upon uh, the emphasis. I think if the emphasis is integrity and decency and trying to work to get problems solved, I think the person has a shot, yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems like you've... By the way, I think pro-immigration isn't the right way to put it. I think border enforcement with a compassionate touch. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's how I would put it. All right, that's a good pro-immigration one. basically means let's just open up the borders, and nobody's really for that. And right. you can't have a country that has open borders. Right. Now, I, I feel like you've made it a point not to criticize your predecessors. That's true. Have you ever been tempted? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess step one is have I ever been tempted to defend myself publicly? And yeah. the answer is no. No? Uh, not really. I mean, look, I'm out. And... Uh, uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I guess I have been. Sure. I mean, anything you can anyone share in particular. Yeah. No, no, I think I'm fine. If, if I did, Michelle Obama might not be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that friendship, by the way, has just captivated people. Yeah. Isn't that so funny that something so simple seems so weird to people? Yeah, it, it really points out how mm-hmm. bitter we become. Yeah. And I'll never forget uh, after McCain's funeral when I gave her the candy. I think mm-hmm. it was Jenna said, "Hey, Dad, you're trending." And I said, uh, "Not sure what that means." You're like, "What did I do?" Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it was uh, Michelle Obama and I being mm-hmm. friendly to each other. Well, you talk about people being friendly, but you know, we know that politics can get ugly. Sure. But I don't know when it's been uglier than January sixth. And I didn't get yeah. a chance to ask you, but when you were watching that unfold as, yeah. the, as the president and the son of one. What, what was going on in your mind? It kind of made me sick. And that kind of made me sick. It did make me sick. I felt ill. And I, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, but I, the truth of the matter is I was optimistic that we would survive that mm-hmm. because I believe so strongly in the institutional stability mm. of our country. And it did survive. The Congress mm-hmm. met. Yeah. Ratified the election. The courts met and are still meeting today to hold people to account for storming the Capitol. Mm-hmm. You know, what's really troubling is how much misinformation there is and the yeah. capacity of people to uh, spread all kinds of untruth. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know what we're going to do about that. I know what I'm doing about it. I don't exactly. do Twitter, Facebook or any of that stuff. You're off of it all now. Yeah. You've never done it. No. Um, President Biden came to you, I guess, a few days ago and explained to you that he was going to pull troops yeah. out of Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you think that was the right decision? Well, when he told me that, I've thought about Roya, who's right over your mm-hmm. left shoulder there. And uh, Roya has been, uh, you know, uh, helping Afghan women and Afghan mm-hmm. girls, as has Laura, mm-hmm. as have people at the Bush Center. And my first reaction was, wow, these girls are going to have real trouble with the Taliban. Mm. And a, a lot of gains have been made. And, uh, and so I'm deeply concerned about the plight of women and girls in, 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 in that country. You think we should have held off on that decision? Well, I think we'll see. I mean, time will tell. I, I, I think the administration hopes that the girls are going to be okay through yeah. diplomacy. Uh, we'll find out. I, all I know is the Taliban, when they f- had the run of the place, they were brutal. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Um, do you, can you believe it's been 20 years since we went in there? Uh, you know, uh, we went into Korea in 52. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We went into Germany yeah. in 42 yeah. or 44. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, 20 years. It's, I guess you're going to say, can you believe yeah. you've been out of office? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. in there first yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, time flies. Let's, I want to talk about your paintings. So I feel like you paint two groups mainly. You paint a lot of people, but you paint veterans. I do paint and, a lot of veterans. And you paint immigrants. Yeah. Why, why those two groups? Well, first of all, I have a kinship with uh, veterans. Yeah. And I great, got great empathy and, uh, with immigrants. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, you know, we were all raised, mainly Jeb, Neil, Marvin, Dara, since I was a little mm-hmm. older, by a woman who came up with, from Mexico with nothing. Yeah. Paula. Yeah, I loved reading her story. Oh, she's awesome. Oh, 
She was awesome. Mm-hmm. And she was nearly as tough as on us as mother. Mm-hmm. She was. Pretty damn tough. Wow. Yeah, yeah, she was great. Wow. But she taught us about family values because mm-hmm. she cared deeply about her family. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, two days ago, uh, two of her daughters came up from Houston to see the portrait. Mm. Uh, and this woman owned homes. She's a voter. Mm-hmm. She cared deeply. Mm. And had two families, mm. one of which was ours. And well, I just, it, it opened up my heart. To- it, it is a beautiful, beautiful book. I've so enjoyed that conversation. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.